Now that I'm used to the climate A thing that if man ever found A place to live easy and happy That Eden is on Puget Sound Eden is on Puget Sound That Eden is on Puget Sound A place to live easy and happy that Eden is on Puget Sound. Hello, you are listening to The Seattle Files. My name is Chris Allen, I'm your host. Every week I get together with a different local comedian, and together we discuss these strange, unusual, interesting, and oftentimes lesser-known aspects of our local history. Uh, before we get into today's episode, uh, I want to talk a little bit about a side project that I'm doing. The Seattle Files is kind of transitioning from a podcast into, hopefully, a TV show. So if you check out the northwestfiles.com, you can see a mini-episode that I've filmed about Donald Trump's grandfather, Friedrich Drumpf, and his businesses ventures in Seattle and the Northwest, and we have an Indiegogo page where we're trying to do a crowdfunding in order to raise enough money to film a proper pilot. So uh, if you check out the northwestfiles.com, you can find out more information about that. But joining me today on the program is Maddie Downs. How's it going, Maddie? It's going great. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Maddie is a stand-up comedian. She is uh, a uh, one of the hosts of the podcast Sexual Awaken Baking, uh, which you can listen to on seattlecomedy.org or iTunes. Stitcher. Um, she is also one of the stars of the new sitcom Northern Bells. You want to talk a little bit about Northern Bells? I would love to. Yeah. So Northern Bells is a single camera comedy about uh, two women in their mid early twenties living in Seattle. Uh, we say it's an imperfectionist, Alex O'Neill, and her best friend and roommate, a perfectionist, Danny De Silva, just navigating their friendship and relationships and their jobs. And comedy, what do you know? It just ensues the whole time. Comedy it ensues. keeps ensuing. Cool. And you're also doing a crowdfunding on that, right? We are, yeah. We are also navigating the ocean of Indiegogo. Excellent. The Indie Ocean. The Indie Ocean. Yes, yeah, I just named it. <laughs> it's, that's an apt name for yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Uh, where, where can place. people watch that? Uh, it's on Vimeo, and it'll also be on uh, Northern Bells series, Northern Bells web series dot com uh, soon when the website's up. Cool, so yeah. So check it out. Uh, I watched it this afternoon. It's hilarious. It's, it's on the front page great. of the Vimeo comedy section as of right now. Who mm. knows what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day? It's but indefinitely. It's They're going to make gonna that a permanent there. St- yeah, permanent the internet, page there. If it's one thing, it is static, and yeah. it'll just live there forever. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But check it out. It's 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 absolutely hilarious. I had, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's funny too. Uh, so how long have you lived in the Seattle area? I grew up in Everett. So I was born, so since 1989, technically, kind of. I went away for college for four years, but I went to Oregon. So I don't even know if that really counts as leaving the state. I mean, it does. How, how far into Oregon did you go? Halfway through. So I was in Eugene, okay. so right in the middle of the state. That's maybe if you were so, in Portland. Right. Then. Right. Within, it takes long enough that you're like, did I get lost? Oh, no, we're just not there yet. There, that's how far into Oregon I was. Okay. And I moved to Boston for about 30 seconds just to kind of. Just a it. layover? It was like a, a good internship that had an end date. And I was like, oh, just hanging out here. And then I came right back to start actually making comedy and things. So I feel like I've lived here my whole life. Okay. That might not reflect in my knowledge of the history of this place. Place. Okay. We're going to find out. That's my next question. How much do you know about the, the local history here? I took Washington State history in yeah. seventh grade. Okay. And I loved it. I really like history and I always have. But my teacher, uh, genius that he was, would just quiz us off of the test. So we knew the answers to the test every time because he would just, they were all like multiple choice. And he would just, we'd, we'd have like a study day the day before and he would just drill us on the questions on the test. That's a very efficient way of uh, making sure you pass the test. We all did very well in his class, yeah. And uh, so I, I did really well in the class, but I don't know that I really retained a lot, okay. necessarily. So we're going to find out. Okay, yeah. let's find out. Awesome. And you have no idea what we're going to be talking about today, correct? No, I have no clue. Cool, awesome. So first off, thanks to Keith Dahlgren for this topic suggestion. If you have a uh, suggestion for a topic you'd like to hear an episode about, shoot me an email at the Files at gmail.com. So let's get into it. Paul Joachim Siegfried Franz Erdmund was born August 25th, 1940 in Berlin, Germany. Uh, his father was German and his mother was from Idaho. It was right in the heart of World War II, and Erdmund recalls as a young boy comforting his mother when sounds uh, were heard in the distance. He said, don't be scared, Mommy. It's not bombers. It's only fighters. What? So he's grown up right in the heart of World War Two. Then he's like a Radar O'Reilly type, where he can like <laughs> tell the difference between like choppers and stuff. You probably would stuff. be able to if you were growing up 
That's true. Determine the, how close the mortars are and what kind of Absolutely. artillery it is. That's why they put babies uh, in different areas and then bomb them so they can use them as military tools later. Is that like a little, sonar kind of thing? baby homing devices. Yeah, like how they raise babies in the dark in Russia so they don't have to see anymore. Similar thing. Uh, is that a, is that a thing? I think it's an internet thing. I don't know okay. if it's an actual real life thing. Is it like, like trying to raise kids that don't need their sight anymore? Is but that like, like the the cats that they were growing in jars, but the whole thing was a hoax? Probably. They're okay. probably also just blind babies in jars that okay. someone took a photo of. I think the probably, story probably started with like a baby was born blind, and then it just grew and, and grew and grew. Like, yeah, yeah, and then a half blind person read it and got it wrong, and then kept retweeting, and here we are. Yeah, that retweets will get you. <laughs> Uh, his father was arrested by the Third Reich for derision, but after six months in prison and on trial, the lead witness against him committed suicide, and there was no case against him, so he was released. So they're, like, in the heart of yeah. Hitler's Third Reich. Dang. Uh, the family survived World War II, and since Erdman's mother was still an American citizen, she was able to get the family to the U.S., where they settled in the Northgate neighborhood of Seattle. Okay. Uh, and his parents divorced in 1958. Rough time to get a divorce. 1958? Yeah. yeah. I feel like everyone's talking about you in 1958. Well, his father was all fucked up from World War II. I don't see how that could ever have it's happened. It's really weird. Six, six months in a Nazi prison. Mm. And yeah. considering they're like, PTSD, you just you just need a drink. Just go get a drink. Yeah. That'll fix it. Go have a nice stiff one and yeah. that'll, uh, that'll solve your problems. Shake those demons right off. Yeah. You. Yeah, for sure. Erdman had a difficult youth being a foreigner in the country. Uh, he got into fights and went to Catholic school for one day, refusing to return after a nun punished him by pulling his ear. Good for you, man. I went to <laughs> Catholic school for a long ass time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I went K through graduation from high school, so... No one ever pulled my hair. No nuns ever pulled my hair. I actually had really cool nuns. So but, you, K uh, through 12, you went to Catholic K school? K through 12. My first public school was college. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm the way I am. Okay. Cool. Uh, he returned to ger- visit Germany regularly, staying with relatives and went to school in Switzerland for a time, and graduated high school in Southern California at a boarding school. This guy's been everywhere. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a citizen of the world. Uh, Erdman returned to Seattle, attended a few colleges briefly, and had a short, uh, short-lived, short unsuccessful marriage where he fathered a daughter. He became a television salesman, and then got into credit card sales, the credit card sales business. He found sales unfulfilling, and later said, quote, When I was selling, I realized that people believed me. Started feeling very guilty. Aww. People actually believed me when I told them something. I realized I should be telling them the truth. He wanted to get into something, quote, more real. That's really sweet. Yeah. So trying to, he feels bad about. Trying to get into real. He's like the philosophy major who's like not going to do anything with his degree because like everything feels. He's like, I don't want to spend money, man. Money's mm-hmm. not real. Everything's so fake. Everything's so fake. Let's just like sit around and smoke cigarettes and talk about Camus. Yeah. I, feel like, I like get this guy. Holding I kind of have like a, stuff. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. kind of have like a history crush on this guy right uh-huh. now. Okay. Into it. Into it. Uh, it was in the early 60s, and he at first viewed hippies with disdain and caution. Okay, well, crush over, but nice run there. Oh, are, are you pro-hippie? Yeah, I went to college in Eugene, man. Oh, there you go, yeah. All about hippies. Hippies are the nicest. Well, I mean, they can be a little bit of a drag, but they're, they're pretty cool. Okay, well, uh, the more he got to know them, the more he liked them. See? There it is. This is a roller co- emotional roller yeah, coaster I'm, for you so far, like isn't Ryan it? Yeah, this is like a Meg Ryan movie. I don't even know what to do. Uh, he read religious <laughs> texts, both Eastern and Western, but didn't care for organized religion. Quote, if you are waiting for something later on, you might miss the boat. God is not going to be. It is. God is within us, and we see that we are all different parts of it. Okay, into it. Into it. Into it. Getting getting culty, but into it. Getting culty. Uh, Erdman headed to San Francisco in 1967, which was the epicenter of the hippie movement at the time, and moved into a small home in the Haight-Ashbury district, where he grew his hair long and wore the traditional hippie garb. All right, okay. We're getting more more hippie-ish. like Forrest Gump. He saw all of World War II, and he's in the height of the Haight-Ashbury. That's true, yeah. He's seeing all the historical highlights of his time. He's bouncing around. He's doing a good job. Yeah. Uh, He met Timothy Leary and Ram Dass, and lived two doors down from the Grateful Dead. Yeah. I just mouthed what as if I'm not allowed to talk. That's awesome. Mm. I didn't know they had a house. It seems unlike them. The Grateful Dead? Yeah. Yeah, they lived in Haight Ashbury. Seems like for they a just live in a bus or like a ditch or something. <laughs> <laughs> we dug a hole and that's our home. <laughs> we're, this is our, like our, what's the word for our grave? It's the, the, what's the dead person hole? It's called a grave, everyone. Yeah. They or a grateful. tomb. There's or other, a tomb. yeah. Tomb implies above ground, but that would be a house, I guess. Mm. So. Yeah. The great uh, Yeah. Erdman uh, experimented with marijuana and psychedelics and suffered back problems, which meant he spent much of his time in bed reading and meditating. Okay. 
Uh, it was during this time he had his first major revelation, where Jesus appeared to him in a vision. He saw his entire life along with path li- past lives, friends, and symbols all flash before him in a moment. Real quick, this was in the Haight-Ashbury that Jesus appeared to him? Yes. Are we sure that like Jerry Garcia didn't just come over to borrow a glass of, like, I don't know, uh, tincture or something? We are not sure. We are I not think sure. that's what happened. I think Jerry Garcia just came over and said, hey. You think he's just... Like, Jesus. Tripping on mushrooms. Yeah, and, uh, or just Jer- really like Jerry Garcia. Really yeah. loves Jerry Garcia. Oh, yeah. Jerry Garcia is great. He's the best best yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. Next, close second to Jesus. Yeah. They're neck and neck. Exactly. Beard and beard. <laughs> uh, through communal living and spiritual exploration, Erdman reached two conclusions that he would carry with him for the rest of his days. We are all one, and love is the answer. His back problem was largely largely responsible for his return to Seattle. He had health in, a health insurance policy that would allow him to get medical treatment, but he was also eager to take what he had learned back home. Okay. So he rented a house on the northwest corner of Queen Anne Hill near Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Uh, tough economic conditions in Seattle in the 1960s left Queen Anne in a state of disrepair, and rent was cheap. What? Yeah, rent Just... was rent was cheap in Queen Anne. Well, that sounds great. I mean, sorry that the whole town was on fire or whatever, but I would think I'd prefer that to whatever's going on now. That right. Sounds great. Yeah. No, things are things are not great on Queen Anne, so it's not it's not yoga moms and labradoodles in no. the sixties. No, just just cheap rent and tripping out dudes with back problems. <laughs> uh, the counterbalance streetcar that had once shuttled passengers up the hill was gone. Uh, the hill was in disrepair. Paul Erdman and his girlfriend Marilyn moved into the house in October of nineteen sixty eight, uh, and shortly a handful more people joined them. They read the Bible, prayed, meditated, and did drugs. Awesome. I mean, Bible, whatever, but the rest, awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Paul had dove headfirst into Christianity. Marilyn put out a sign in front of the house that said, quote, All who want to believe in Jesus Christ are welcome. Okay. So it's a little little commune growing up here. That's nice, Mm -hmm. yeah. That would never happen now. You don't think so? I think, like, if more than one neighbor shares their Wi-Fi password on Queen Anne, I think, like, that's as close to a commune Queen Anne's going to get for the next, like, 20 years. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, no matter how much you, unless you really believe in Jesus, then just walk in, see what happens. Just see what happens. Say, yeah. hey, I love Jesus. You want to commune? Let's yeah. Commune. Uh, the group did lots of LSD, which mm-hmm. they viewed as a tool for spiritual awakening. Sure. At some point, the members of the small commune or family, as they've been call- begun calling themselves, started switching partners. Uh, Marilyn began a relationship with resident Clint, and Paul became involved with Clint's wife, Rosemary. Okay. All right. Okay. This is the best chapter of the Bible, the group sex chapter. Yeah. So, like, definitely do this. Jesus yeah. wants you to do this. It didn't make... Constantine pushed it out when everything got canonized. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was, it, was the, it was the first draft. They just couldn't figure out how to tax polyamorous couples. They right. were like, can you just stop? This is a logistical nightmare for us. We're trying mm-hmm. to build a democracy oh. here. You're killing if I, me. If I know one thing about the Bible, it's tax collectors controlled everything. Just all about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, one evening, Paul sat with five, uh, the other five members of the family and made an announcement. He had discovered his true name, and his name was Love. What? His name is Love. Excellent. He wanted each to go by their own true names as well, beginning with the only child living in the house, Eric, who Love christened Hope. Rosemary became Honesty, Clint became Faith, Marilyn became Patience, and Neil became Strength. Okay. And uh, Neil became Turnips. <laughs> The one thing he likes. Huh? Yeah, no, he just—he's really into turnips. <laughs> he just—that's his name. Turn up. Uh, shortly after, each gave up their last names and uh, as well, and took the common surname Israel, which literally means children of God. Okay. All so right. The theology of the family was: we are all one. Love is the answer. Now is the time. Dang. I didn't know this. Exi- this is great. Yeah, I feel like I didn't. I didn't know about hippies till I like lived in Oregon. So it's comforting to know they've been here the whole time. Oh yeah, no, yeah. this is the big, big time in big the sixties. Yeah. Lots of oh yeah, yeah. I uh, love Israel was also a play on words, which the group, uh, which was appealing to the group as well. Okay, love, love is real. Is real. Mm-hmm. Oh no, <laughs> get out! You're not allowed it. Do you, every time you introduce yourself, hi, I'm Love Israel. Eh? Eh? <laughs> like it's a funeral. Can you not? This is where they lose you. Right yeah, this is where. Group sex and LSD, yeah. Yeah, like I can go my room and read during the group sex, you know? I don't have that kind of attention span or whatever, but the rest of it seems fine. But cheap puns, get out of my house. Yeah. Get out, put some shoes on, All right. and leave. <laughs> Find some shoes and leave. Anybody's shoes. Anybody's shoes. Shoes are communal. Yeah, it's all, mm. they're all our shoes, but just put some of them on. Yeah. And get out of my life forever. Any given shoes will do. <laughs> Just leave. Collectively, the group took the name Church of Jesus Christ of Armageddon. Uh, Armageddon, in this case, did not mean the end of the world, but instead meant separate from the world and play, a place where people could gather. Okay. And so then the, Bruce Willis ruined it in that movie. Yeah. About asteroids and stuff. Yeah. Uh, die hard. I feel like they're doing a lot of, like, we're going to take the name for this thing, like, Israel, 
but we're going to make it, we're going to use it the way that nobody ever uses it. <laughs> like, it's not what words are for. you got to just use the words that mean the thing you want to say to other people. Well, you can't what? be like... My name is Maddie. I kill people. And by kill people, I mean kill their outer ego and bring them into their truth. Nigga's not what language kill is people alive. means. You know? Langu- language That's is true. a living, breathing Dynamic. thing. Dynamic. I'm being snobby. Yeah. I'm being a dictionary create, snob create, right now. Create our own slang. Yeah. You know? You got to... Uh, you know what I to say. Yeah. Reappropriation. Changing words. You know, ask was originally ax. Really? Yeah. In You're the Middle kidding. Ages, it was ax. If you go back through old uh, Middle English texts, you'll find ax. Oh, there's a lot of college professors that need to eat their own elbow right now. Yeah. Like, That's not the proper way of speaking, and I can't understand you when you speak that way. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully a book falls on well, there. Finally, my English degree is paying off. Yeah, I know. Congratulations. The, yeah, no, it's about time. Today's the day. For all these years. For all, all right. this time. Mm-hmm. You hear that, Chris's mom? <laughs> Take that, Mrs. Allen. I have no idea what your mom That's you. You nailed it. Yes. You nailed it. It yeah. stinks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, a charter was written out. Outlining the spiritual and practical boundaries of the group, love was direct recipient of the wisdom of Jesus and the unquestioned leader. Okay. By love, do, you, do they mean doing it, or do they mean, like, love in general, you think? I mean love, the person love. Oh, the is the person leader, love. The, the person love, yeah. See, this is why so you don't buckle up. This is going to get really super confusing, word. yeah. All right, all right. Got it. I'm ready. And let me tell you, researching this, super confusing. Okay. Because yeah, every, every person is named love or happiness or joy or whatever. And, and they some have a rough t- couple of years and they're named Joy Division, Bright Eyes. They just named themselves after Sad Bands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a rough oh. era for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moore joined the Israel family, including some love had met when he was in San Francisco. Uh, Brian Allen, the son of comedian Steve Allen, joined. What? Yeah, Steve Allen's son joined this group. Okay, yeah. Uh, Brian- mean, comedians are distant parents, I'm sure. He needed a little affection. Are you, are you saying that comedians are not well-adjusted? And uh... I mean, I don't want to make such a bold assertion. Mm-hmm. I don't want to make this a controversial podcast for you. It feels like not really your brand. But I will say sometimes maybe comics aren't always the best people to everyone all the time. Okay. I don't want to get too crazy with it. That's, I think, I think we can agree. They're not <laughs> the best to everyone all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Not all the time. Mm-mm. You know, they try. Yeah. You can Do be they? the best to some of the people some of the time. Yeah. All of the people. And then a garbage person all of the time apparently to everyone. Yeah. Uh, so Brian Allen joined. Uh, Brian had traveled the world and lived a life of luxury, but now he was looking for something more meaningful. He took the name Logic Israel. Daniel Gruner... Uh, had also grown up wealthy and was looking to live a life that had more meaning than the extravagance he had grown up with. He later said, quote, All I know is my parents were wealthy and they didn't enjoy it. He took the name Richness Israel. Which... These two need to, they're like the dumb and dumber of the situation. You think so? Logic is real. You joined a cult, man. You don't get to be <laughs> thrown around logic. Yeah, logic is real and you are logically being an idiot right now. Although maybe yeah. it was fun. Who's to say? I but bet it was pretty fun. I bet it was great. I mean, yeah, LSD and like, you know. Yeah. Group stuff. I don't know why I'm being shy about it. There, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just like that the guy who's really rich becomes richness Israel. Mm-hmm. He said it wasn't because oh. it was because of his like spirit and the richness of yeah, his. Yeah, I'm sure it was. You got to figure the rest and of them were kind of And these sweet Air Jordans I'm wearing. Yeah. the worst. I bet they gave him his own room. I bet everyone else slept in like a big pile in the living room. And they're like, no, you get the you get the master bedroom. They did. They did sleep kind of in a pile. I believe not so that, much. But weirdly. there's like 20 people in these like three bedroom houses. Yeah. Yep. Piling will happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert Brewer was a grad student for a time at Indiana University, but dropped out to go to Los Angeles, where he counseled improv- impoverished youth and experimented with Eastern religions, channeling and improv. <laughs> never had a chance. Uh, oh, yeah, he never yeah, had a chance. He went from improv to a cult. Well, that's, I mean, there's uh, a lot of yes ending in both. That's just, true, like, I'm not yeah. going to question. I'm sure you're. we're going to go together, and if it gets weird, we'll get, it'll get weird with you know all of us as a group. <laughs> my name is Love. Yes, and my name is Sirius. <laughs> Uh, he gave up everything to join a similar commune in Tennessee called The Farm before moving to Seattle and becoming Serious Israel. Serious? Serious Israel. Oh my gosh, you guys. There's still more values. You don't have to be serious. You could be like thrift or something. <laughs> thrift? I guess thrift Israel kind of opens you up for some Judaism yeah. jokes that you don't necessarily want, but... I'm frugal Israel. Yeah, I'm kind of stereotypically cheap Israel. Yeah, like, I'm it's not a great... Coupon clipper Israel. <laughs> Argue with the waitress Israel. <laughs> Uh, by 1972, the family had grown and they adopted many more into their fold. The new members took names according to their qualities and the surname Israel. A neighbor across the street from the original house joined the group and opened up her doors to the community as well. Nice. <clears throat> so they're, they're just spreading across Queen Anne. Really sexy gentrification. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, local landlords were amenable to the strange group, and some allowed family members to stay in rundown, unoccupied homes if the family would clean it up and make repairs during their stay there. That's a great idea. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's let these hippies come in and uh, clean up our house, yeah. and then we'll turn it for a as long profit. As you mind that your doorbell is wired to your television or something, because I don't know what I'm doing, I would mm-hmm. be happy to do that well, for some anyone of them, ever. Some of them would have. There's a lot of people joining, so right. some of them would have been contractors, electricians, and things like that. People uh, used to know how to build things. I forget that sometimes. Like mm. People used to just build stuff, and I feel like people still build things, but the percentage of the population that knows how to use a power drill is plummeting, maybe. True. You know? Yeah. Not, maybe not in a bad way, but it feels like it's true. That's why you need to do theater. Mm-hmm. Because then yeah. you'll build sets yeah. with the power drill. In college, instead of taking uh, potentially more challenging mm-hmm. classes. And people also uh, used to fix things instead of getting new Throwing things. Throwing them out. Yeah, I, yeah. Sewed, uh, I sewed something in front of something someone yesterday, and it blew their mind. Really? Um, yeah, I was just fixing, fixing a bra. It was like I was healing a dead body. Wow. Right, yeah. If you want to feel cool, just sew in front of a millennial. Or heal a dead body. Or heal a dead body. That's but, also pretty impressive. You know, the smell. I remember as a kid going to like small appliance repair stores. Oh, yeah. With my parents and like, oh, get the VCR repaired. You can just fix it. Well, now it's like I was using a car the other day that had like an electrical trunk closure. Mm-hmm. Like the car has to close your trunk for you. Which is terrible because what if it stops working? Is your yeah. trunk just not going to... Like you used to just... It used to be like a simple mechanism. No one's lives are improved by computers. Lots of people's lives are improved by computers. But for the purposes of my rage right now, let's all... Let's throw all the computers in the ocean. So a bra, people. Yeah. So a bra. So a bra and get enlightened. Get on mm-hmm. my level. Also, mm-hmm. for the record, bras are maybe the only thing I can fix. So bras and toilets. Okay. Yeah. All right. Necessity makes... Those are very important things to know how to fix. Necessity. Yeah. Uh, so, housing prices in Queen Anne were so low that some houses sold for only a few thousand dollars. What the what? Which is infuriating at this Mom point. and dad, well, they weren't here yet, but grandma and grandpa, what were you doing not buying houses? <sighs> yeah, but a thousand dollars is a lot of money back then. That's true. It's a lot of money right now, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. How, is a thousand dollars a lot of money? I would say, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks that, for asking me. Then it checks out. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. No, it totally you. checks out. Uh, with the help of Richness Israel's contribution, they were able to buy several properties in the neighborhood. Yeah, Richness Israel. I bet it's about the richness of your spirit, you twat. <laughs> uh, the interiors of the homes were plain with simple furniture, pictures of Jesus and crosses, and usually lit in the evening by candlelight. Uh, each morning, uh, the group got up at about 4.30 a.m., uh, and they had a two-hour or so meeting where the entire group got together, sipped coffee, smoked marijuana, and discussed spiritual matters. Absolutely. Just kicking it on the That's floor. That's the kind of continental breakfast I feel like more hotels should offer. <laughs> you know? Do you want to drink too much coffee and get a little too high and then talk about the end of the world? Yes, I do. Every day. That sounds delightful. It sounds really good. In fact, I think we should change the, what this podcast is about right now. Okay. So what's the new name? Um, uh, Caffeine, weed, and... Jesus? And Jesus, maybe? Yeah, yeah. it's weak, but it's simple. You yeah, know? it gets the message enough, across. Yeah, it's like you want to know what you're getting. You don't want to be clever. You want to be clear. Right. Yeah. Life isn't about being funny. It's about people knowing exactly what you mean all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Serious Mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. Uh, Over the course of the next day, or over the course of the day, they tended gardens, uh, worked in one of the small businesses that the group opened up on Queen Anne, including the Front Door Inn, a coffee shop, and a produce market, or they tended to the house or gardens, prayed, read the Bible, and meditated. Oh, I wish that front door in place was still open. That's yeah, great. it was open 24 hours a day. What? They always had somebody there. It was always open. That's a good thing about hippies. If you have a lot of hippie friends, somebody is awake. I promise That's you. That's true. Somebody's they, up. They would also send people out on patrols in the night. To just, just to, like, keep to walk around the things? neighborhood and just make sure everything is okay. Well, that's cool. And so that's how they ended up making a lot of friends with the neighbors because they were making the neighborhood safer by going we out on these patrols. Do that. Just like go. I think Pokemon Go is making me safer. I walked oh, into yeah. Cal Anderson last night and I didn't mind because there were a hundred people there. Okay. And they all had phones, so no one was going to mess with you. Were you like, Were you catching Pokemon? I wasn't. I don't. My phone doesn't have enough uh, memory left on it, but okay. I'm enjoying other people's. Okay. Uh, but I think it's, I think just everyone should just hang out in the street all of the time and then crime would stop forever. Yeah. I think I solved it. I, uh, I lived in New York for years and when I came back home and visited my uh, family in Federal Way, I always said I felt safer wherever I was in New York yeah. than walking through the streets in Federal Way just because there's always a thousand people around. Right. And so 
if you do a thousand people around, there's a level of right. safety because everybody can see like, what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And I don't, I don't subscribe to the idea that like more people equals like more problems. I think like usually we kind of keep each other pretty accountable. I think it's pronounced so, mo people mo problems. Mo, excuse me, you're correct. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's a regional thing. I'm from Everett. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, yeah. We, we don't drop ours there. Oh, just, got it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, but the front door and they had a thing called an abundance table where they would just lay out produce and anybody could come in no matter who you are and you could That's take some really produce. Nice. Uh, the group was overwhelmingly white, unsurprisingly. As in Seattle. Uh, but the elders yeah. denied this was intentional, claiming that they opened their doors to whoever showed up and showed an interest in joining the family. Yeah, I feel like in the sixties though, it's not like it's just like a sea of like naked white people. I don't see any. I don't know. Not that people wouldn't necessarily. You just go see in. a sea of naked people, not a sea of naked white people. I mean, I just feel like I wouldn't be the first person of color into a sea of. White people. I don't. Think, you know? I don't think you would be a person of color at all in that. That's true. State, in but... in zero situations, would I be the first person of color anywhere? Yeah, You're correct. True. So let's stop right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, when a new member joined, they were typically, <laughs> but not always, given a biblical name that they went by for a time before adopting a name that rang true with their virtues. Yes. Always firm believers in the power of visions. When someone had a vision or a dream about what a member's new name should be, they ran it by love, who decided if it was right or not. <laughs> you could really mess with somebody, but. Like, I had a vision that your name's Fart Israel. Yeah. I don't know. I had a vision. It was a real vision. Mm-hmm. I would, I would try that at least I think once. Stanky Teeth Israel is, uh, <laughs> teeth yeah. Israel. I think that's, I think that's your name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when someone is baptized into the group, they gave up all their personal possessions and wealth to the group and signed over power of attorney to love. Okay. All right. Well, someone has to pull the plug if you get sick. That's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Or access your checking account or. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. if you've already turned it over, then it's just helpful. You don't have to go to the ATM all the time. That's true. Especially because they didn't have them back then. Yeah. So especially then. Yeah. Couldn't even find one. Mm-hmm. Spend hours walking around waiting for someone to invent an ATM. Yeah. Trying to catch Pokemon that aren't there yet. Yeah. And... Nope. Oh, man. Everyone just thinks you're just hauling a rotary phone around, hitting squirrels, trying to <laughs> capture Pokemon. <laughs> Yes. I killed a raccoon with this phone. Ten points. <laughs> <laughs> After Wonderful. this, we should go play old school Pokemon. Oh, hell it's yeah. Super fun. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've got an old cordless phone that, yeah, who absolutely. has a wired phone I have an anymore, otter box. So. I'll whip it at any creature of any kind. Okay. It won't die. Sounds Let's good. Sounds good. Uh, if you need to find us, we'll be in jail for killing squirrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll so. be the infamous squirrels, the first squirrel serial killers in mm-hmm. Washington history. It's hard to trailblaze as a serial killer in this town. That's true. You gotta get creative. Well worn. Well worn path. Yeah. One new convert who only ended up spending six months with the family gave over $200,000 worth of money and assets, including cars and jewelry. Awesome. A divorced mother joined the group and gave it a tract of land she had purchased in Arlington about an hour north of Seattle. Okay. Richness Israel gave millions of dollars and a parcel of land he owned in Alaska when he joined. Richness, I'm getting real sick of your showing off, dude. You think Richness is uh, trying to trying to inflate himself a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Dickness. Well, he's just, he's just giving up. He's just giving up. it up. Yeah. Feels like, I just don't trust you, man. Your name's Rich on purpose. If your name's Rich and your parents did it, that's one thing. You okay. Like, I know what I should do. I think other people named him Richness, though. <sighs> Fine. But, yeah. You're, vision, you're on, you're on notice, Richness. You're on, you're on, you're on. You're not kicked out yet. Okay. All right. You're keeping him in. Uh, <laughs> members were required to sever all ties to their old family and old life when they joined. Logic wrote a cold letter to his father that read, quote, Dear Dad, I have given up my old name and all that went with it. My new name is Logic Israel. I do not expect to be returning to Los Angeles. This will be my last letter. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know his dad. Maybe it was great. Maybe his dad was a real pill. S- Steve Allen? Oh. Maybe, no, just kidding. Sorry. See, this is why it gets confusing. It does. I'm just confusing people with... All right, well, people Steve Allen. People have multiple names and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Uh, letters sent to members of the Israel family were usually returned without being opened. Uh, the group wore biblical-style clothes, robes, and uh, barefoot or sandal feet. There were no mirrors allowed, and they were thought to encourage vanity. Oh, that, well, they, they do, for sure. Mirrors. They also help you get stuff out of your teeth, but who am I to judge, you know? Yeah. Also, sandals in Seattle? Yeah. All the time? All the time. What about your cold toesies? I don't know. Maybe if, it's, maybe if it's cold out. They Biblical didn't... rain boots? Biblical rain boots, Maybe yeah. if your shoes are made out of Bible pages, somehow they're more loud. Mm. Like, Does that sound disrespectful? I mean... It's like using the whole buffalo, kind of. Oh, so maybe yeah. it's the highest respect you could show a Bible would be to like make shoes out of it. What if you just like get regular shoes but then rub the Bible all over it? Is that I think you're sanctified? supposed to that's how I break in my shoes. Is that not how you were taught to break in shoes? I, I was not, no. Oh, I was, yeah, I no. use a Quran. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah so, no, I, that makes sense. I was raised elsewhere. <laughs> so, federal way. Yeah, so, no, yeah. that's why mm-hmm. I hear 
heavy, heavy Quran neighborhood. Yeah. What does that mean? That might be racist. Is that what I meant? I'm just spitballing and being an idiot. I love you, Federal Way. Bye. <laughs> That's the first time anybody's ever said I love you, Federal Way. Yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. I hope that uh, means something to them. Toilet paper was not allowed. And each member insisted instead, <laughs> should, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have said that while you were taking a drink. Should not have said that when you were taking a drink there. Why not? Uh, toilet paper was not allowed and each member instead had a squirting water bottle they could use to clean themselves. Okay, that I'm on board with, honestly. Yeah. I used a bidet for the first time a couple years ago and I've never been the same since. Why are we using paper? It yeah, doesn't it's make a good any question. I, I went backpacking through Cambodia a couple years ago and they yeah. have the bum gun thing. I don't know what that is, but I'm very on board. It's like a little, uh, you know how some sinks in, in kitchens have the little, like, thing you, yeah, you yeah, with, like the, with the hose that yeah. you squirt out it's that basically that's an incredible no idea. it's, great. it's it, great i was freaked out about it at first and my friends over there were like no this is going to change your life yes yeah, this is the best also do you think they use the same squirt bottle or they is had, like a write your name on your cup write party your name on your cup right. and they had hooks in the bathroom that they would line them all up but apparently the kids would play practical jokes and mix the bottles around well, that's just easy that's just too easy it's Good too job, easy kids. yeah it's that's that's uh, i don't know if i'm on board with that kind of practical well joke. i'm not on, i'm bored with it but i also feel like these kids are raised in a commune and they're probably getting teased a lot at school they probably didn't go to they school, don't go to huh? school no yeah it's homeschool well then if you're gonna homeschool them they're gonna get into trouble somewhere yeah so mm-hmm. Keep they're it gonna mix home. up your butt cups there was no personal property or money uh, a jar hung in the dining room filled with cash where anyone could take whatever they needed purely on the honor system. Uh, a few times, large amounts of cash went missing, but it was believed to be the work of visitors and not family members. All right. That makes sense. The Bible was the only book allowed. Some claimed that there could be wisdom found in other religious texts, but love ordered that any books brought into the house other than the Bible were to be burned. All right. Well, we've taken a hard left turn here. Yeah. It's a like community money bucket. This is like how socialism turns into fascism. Like, it seems like everyone's all in it for each other, and then we're burning books all of a sudden. Yeah. Every time, man. Microcosm of the greater world on Upper Queen Anne. For somebody who fled Nazi Germany, you're starting to build your own tiny hippie Nazi Germany, mm. sir. Interesting. Maybe he's like, I just thought that's what you did with books. Maybe he <laughs> just like, didn't know. What's a bookshelf? Is mm-hmm. that not he thought bookshelf and fireplace were yeah, the same word for exactly. 20 years? In German, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Buchenbach. <laughs> it's a... Uh, Book and Vach or Book and Vic is, yeah, uh, is it's a difference. It's, it's a, a whole, really, yeah. And if you sneeze in the middle, your books are going to light on fire. Right, yeah. Someone's going to torture mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. Uh, spirituality was at the center of family life. The members did not believe in personal property, age, or birthdays, claiming instead that they were eternal. Okay. So if you ask, um, how old are you? I'm eternal. That's great. Mm-hmm. How Do you think they could buy a beer at the store with that? Uh, well, it led to some problems. I can see. Uh, some members were pulled over or stopped on the, in the street uh, by police, and they gave a strange name and refused to give their birthday, claiming instead that they were eternal. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get arrested A guy sure. named One was pulled over. Yeah, his name was One. Mm-hmm. O-N-E. Mm-hmm. He later changed it to W-O-N, though. Oh, okay. So the same name, but I different. Then he changed it to like two, and then he changed it to three. Oh, and he just kept getting as, as he, he got as he more and up, more eternal, more and more Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so they ended up actually working out a deal with the city where they got special licenses. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, the city should do that more often. Yeah, cooperate with people a little bit. Yeah, you can't force me to have a eye color, man. Yeah, I'll list my soul color on my creepy license. It's clear. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not. It's spotty it's it's eternal it's eternal, it's eternal. my eye color is eternal yeah. uh, one little boy in the group did not quite understand this and when once asked by an outsider how old he was he said he was a turtle oh well you're my favorite and i hope your name is turtle israel i don't think it was oh. probably something like rowdy israel or i don't know <laughs> poop switch israel <laughs> <laughs> poop switch israel <laughs> Drugs were a very po- important part of the spiritual process. Coffee, wine, and marijuana were all considered sacred and used frequently. I agree with uh, both of those statements. Yeah. Marijuana was smoked out of fancy pipes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. LSD was considered a powerful tool that could connect one, cl- connect one closer to God. God was not somewhere out there, nor was he in the future. God is right here, right now. Uh, cocaine and other drugs were used, but sparingly. Good choice. Mm. That's a good call. Two family members, Reverence Israel and Solidarity Israel, died from uh, from huffing toluene. To- 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 toluene. Toluene? What toluene? Is that? It's a solvent. Oof. Yeah, it's not a good thing to huff. Yeah, no kidding. It's like huffing paint or glue or... Not so eternal now, are you? No. That was dark. But I... Yeah. Ooh. Uh, they were found with plastic bags over their heads that they had put toluene in and suffocated. Oh, that's sad. That's, Don't do it's that. It's real bad. Yeah. yeah. No, huffing is not a good. Not a good one. No. Stick to marijuana, wine, and coffee. What are you doing to me? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The family convinced medical examiners to hold off on performing an autopsy on the grounds that if they were true believers, they would come back to life in a few days. Okay. Well, that sounds like a quick way to end your religion, but sure. Yeah. They uh, they did not 
come uh, yeah, back fair. to life. Yeah, so I, I they can see. Must not have I feel been. like I might have heard of that. People not coming back to life? No, the two people who did come. If those two came back to life, there would be like a. Oh, yeah. It, know, would be, it would be news. We would all be this religion, and my name would be less of a sarcastic piece of shit Israel. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Como would have showed up yeah, and uh, done sure. a story on it. Yeah. <laughs> and you would have been sack of shit Israel. Is that. Well, or less, less of a sack less of Less of a sarcastic sack of shit Israel, because if that had happened, I probably would believe in it, and then I would be less sarcastic about religion. But. Okay. Yeah. But it's you a still long name. But enough, I'm a cool hyphen. Enough to the point where you're still that's still your name. Still in there. But oh it's yeah. One, I mean, old dog okay. do tricks and all, but I'm yeah. going to be less vocal about it. Okay, fair mm-hmm. enough. That yeah. sounds sounds fair. Sure. Uh, the family or uh, there was a concern that children in the group were being given drugs. Okay. Fair. And later confirmed that a five year old child was given LSD and encouraged to smoke marijuana. Ooh. Yeah, you don't give you don't give LSD to a five year old. No, not a good no, idea. You don't give too much sugar to a five year old. No. Good lord. Yeah. Uh, children were raised communally rather than just by just their parents. Understanding Israel was something of the group's nanny. Okay. So her name was Understanding. Makes children sense. were homeschooled, and some of the members were former teachers and oversaw the children's education, including Eve, Understanding, Ethan, Listening, Dedication, Definition, Reason, and Appreciation. Okay. I can get on board with that. Uh, reading lessons took place exclusively from the Bible. For a time, some of the children read Little House on the Prairie, but love banished it because it involved ages. <laughs> didn't want them to learn about ages. I mean, that's the first time anyone's found anything inappropriate in Little House on the Prairie. So I guess kudos, you know. Yeah. What was that, Michael Landon? Uh, is that Little House? Lori Ingalls Wilder? No, that's something else. This is not not boating off my education right now. I don't know who wrote Little House on the Prairie. All I remember from that book is well, Michael that Landon was in the in the in the show. Oh, in right? the show? I wasn't don't know. Guy? I, I don't was allowed to watch TV. As oh, kid, Catholic so school. I'm pretty, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's all in there. I, a teacher read it to me one time, and I remember she made us. We would read it during lunch, and she like made us stop eating because she told the story of the part where they inflate the bladder of a cow or a deer or something, and then play with it like a balloon. So I was figuring he'd ban it because that part was just kind of gross. No, oh. yeah. Mm. Oh, they no, would slaughter the rams sometimes at like special occasions. So. These people would, yeah, the Israels, yeah, at their just farm. on the top of Queen Anne. Just no, at their farm in Arlington. Oh, that makes they more They would have sense. had Sorry. a Passover celebration and they okay. slaughtered the ram. They weren't like wasn't like blood running down the streets of Queen Anne Hill. No, no, well, no that's no. good. Yeah, Fair no. Uh, history wasn't taught because it was a discussed a world that might be considered evil. Okay, that makes sense. The world is pretty evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the family, women were considered less than men. All right. Yeah, this is where they lose you permanently, right? Yeah, this is it. I'm out. Huff and Toluene, one thing. Yeah. I mean, huff if you want to huff, but just treat me like a person, you know? Yeah. Uh, they typ- the women typically got about three quarters of the food that men got and were required to be subservient. What? How do you have a community money jar and I can't have as many pickles as you? This is horseshit. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. So I'm, I guarantee I'm bigger than this guy and could eat more food than him. Uh, now I'm taking it personal. Now you're, now, now it's, now it's real. Yeah. Richness is out of the group. I always, I used to say I hate love and now I'm saying it again and meaning it differently. Okay. <laughs> Uh, traditional marriage, marriage rules evaporated, and when someone joined into the family, they married into the entire family. Many experimented with polyamory, although that provided to be troublesome. Sirius later said that they learned, quote, fairly quickly that we did not know how to manage it, and we usually made a mess of it, so we got a little more conservative after that. Right. Well, if something is hard, just crack down on the minorities in the area, and then uh, usually things shape up, right? Mm-hmm. Not Love a, the Nazi? Not a lot of minorities in the Well, the cult. women, there I guess, There were a couple of homosexuals in the I don't know cult, why women but... are called a minority. We're, there's more of us. I should stop doing that. Hmm. Anyway. There might have been less women in the in this cult, though. Probably, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the numbers were. T- dumb rules. Yeah. You know? And ladies don't cotton to dumb rules. No. We don't like mm-hmm. no dumb rules. <laughs> Uh, Love was considered the only actual husband and had complete control over the women. He could loan a wife to another member of the group or take a mate sometimes in, or take their mate sometimes in spite. Yeah, men and women were only allowed to be together if they got permission from Love, and Love took essentially two primary wives, Honesty and Bliss. Well, good choice picking Bliss, first of all. Second of all, I feel like... This is the part where you, like, stay at a party too long, and then someone starts, like, taking the playlist over, but, like, with your whole life. What happened? They used to have, like, a fruit stand and just, like, weed coffee mornings, and now the women are, like, checked out, like, library books? Something like that, Come yeah. On, not library books. Library Bibles, obviously. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, you know, yeah, like, when you're at a party and you meet people and you're like, hey, these people are cool, and then hey. you go, like, mingle with other people and you come back, but they've had a lot more to drink. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. People are like, oh, no, you are being you're terrible worst. right you're the now. Worst. Or someone, like, gives you a ride home and you're like, this is going great, this is going great, and then you, like, get stuck in traffic and they're, like, just turn weird on you, and you're like, oh, no. 
Well, I'm in this car now. That Better, sounds very specific. I hope they feed me. It's not, but it did sound specific. Okay, it? got it. Yeah. yeah, no, not referring to anything. Okay. I don't think. Uh, are you, are you re- com- memories flooding back? I mean, back I feel now? like I, I feel like I probably repress a good one eighth of what happens to me. That's normal, okay, right? Okay, yeah, yeah just fair enough. Just it down. I don't yeah. have that kind of time. No, yeah. Processing's for people with no day job. Right. Yeah. Uh, the family grew and eventually had 15 houses on Queen Anne Hill, as well as the properties in Arlington, Alaska, and a few others in Washington and Hawaii. Nice. Now, the Israel family had gained a great deal of acceptance in Seattle and was even inducted as a non-voting member of the Church Council of Greater Seattle. Okay. Non-voting. Good call. Non-voting, yeah. So they're they're kind of legitimized at this point. All right. Uh, there was much concern among the former family members of the Israel family that they had lost their loved ones to what appeared to be a cult. Yeah, which, yeah, I can see how that might be the impression you're getting. Yeah, if you say if you get a letter from your child that says, "My uh, name is Logic now," right? And also, I would have been concerned at you know the the poop squirt guns, let alone all the <laughs> all the other stuff, and be like, "You've clearly lost your mind forever." This is the fifties. We're using paper. Come mm-hmm. home. We're yeah. in the seventies now. Oh well, so there's even more toilet paper in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> The, the 70s were rich in toilet paper. And not much else. Yeah. Not, they didn't have gas anymore, so we were trying to run cars on toilet paper. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ted Patrick had made a name for himself as a cult, cult deprogrammer in the 70s. <laughs> Just walks through cults slapping people in the face until they come to. Kind of. Yeah. That's I'm, kind of what he did. That sounds like it. <laughs> uh, in 1973, he abducted 19-year-old Keith Crampton, who had taken the name Dedication Israel. Yeah, uh, you take dedication, you take the, the most dedicated one, mm-hmm. you, you know, cut the snake off at the head. Make an example out of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the abduction took place at Mount Pleasant Cemetery with a film crew in tow. Uh, Crampton's mother was worried when she came to Seattle to meet with her daughter and found her thin, vacant eyed with scabs all over her face. This is before she was abducted? No, this is this is before she was abducted. So this is yeah, when yeah, she, yeah. she joins the cult. Okay. And then her mother comes to visit and is like, what's going, what's going on? on and she's all... Let's get that super yeah. Irish guy in there to slap her in the face. Yeah, super, uh, very um, uh, low-protein diets, yeah. long meditation hours, yeah, sleep deprivation. Yeah, exhausting. She's getting three-quarters yeah. of the food as the other people. I mean, this is all just classic cult Text stuff. Textbook cult malnutrition. Right. And she's 19. Yeah. She's impressionable. Yeah. When I was 19, no, I don't even have a story of that. Uh, my thought, I got into you, a car and they took on the and drive home. And just, and, uh, even though I didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I was thinking I was thinking it was good that she got abducted, but is it good to abduct someone even if they're in a weird... That's a, that's that's a, a moral very, gray area. Yeah, it's you know? a very interesting question. It's still, like, you abducted a girl at a cemetery and filmed it, which I guess maybe is accountability, but... You still abducted a girl in the seventh. It's weird to have What's two f- sides of that. It's a film crew that comes along from a news organization. Oh, okay. So they're doing a story on right. Ted Patrick as, okay. a, as a cult deprogrammer. I thought maybe they did it to be like, hey, just so you know, we can like prove what happened. Oh. Nothing, no funny no, business. This is about, but it was like it's publicity. About, yeah. Well, this is icky. Well, I, don't about, I don't know about publicity. Uh, okay. The thin line between publicity and journalism That's at this true. point. That is true. Because there's a lot of concern about cults and these communal things that are going on. And there's some, some places that are just like, hey, we're a bunch of people who bought a farm that have common ideals. Right. And there's also, hey, we're going to make... Force women to be sexually available, deprive them of sleep, and not feed anybody. And food, and give them drugs. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a... It's hard to tell which is which. Yeah. Especially in the early days of Seriously. these organizations. Well, because nobody's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, we're the one that starves women. Like, that was us. No one right. really owns yeah. up to... There's no exactly. registry for which one's which. Uh, Patrick was going to take her to San Diego uh, and attempt to deprogram her, but Kate almost escaped by screaming for help during a bathroom stop in Kelso. Okay. They're going to drive all the way down to San Diego. They stop for a bathroom in Kelso. Kate freaks out, starts yeah. screaming. The police were summoned, and the police are like, "What? What do we do? Is this because she's she doesn't acknowledge that her mother is there? She doesn't acknowledge her mother. She says she only acknowledges her spiritual mother right. back in Seattle. Oof. Uh, so they take her to the courthouse for a psychiatric evaluation. Okay. And she was deemed no danger to herself or society, and yeah. was released of her own free will. Yeah. Uh, only to be abducted by Patrick in the courthouse parking lot and taken to San Diego. So as soon as she leaves the courthouse, they grab her, throw her in the van. Oh, my God. Yeah, I guess if the first time you take her is illegal, you're like, oh, is this illegal? Well, I'm going to do it. Just give me a second. Yeah. Well. Just give me a second. Just give just, me a second. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's like when you play tag. You have to like, give her like eight seconds before you can run after her. Oh, no yeah. No tag backs. You can't just tag her right back. No tag backs, yeah. It's not anarchy. This is Ted Patrick, and he's a principled man. Mm-hmm. Uh, she played along that she rejected the Israel family, but fled the first chance, chance she got and returned to Seattle. Okay. Of course. Uh, she left the group on her own eight years later. 
Interesting. So she stays in the group. She had father. She she, father, she uh, has a child right. in the group, and then she leaves eight years later on her own. Okay. I wonder what. Oh, eventually, she was like, "You know what? I need toilet paper. This is. I'm out. I gotta go. <laughs> I know I fought off two abductions to be here, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get my own apartment." Uh, Ted Patrick was later convicted of kidnapping and a similar venture and served prison time. I don't know that that's, that's wrong. I gotta be honest. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really great area. If, if you do if you do something really cool, but. <sighs> Because she's apart. she's nineteen, and yeah, so she's she's, she's not a minor. She's right. not, so she can do what she wants. And but like, at the same time, it's this. If you want to, like, I mean, I don't know how you reason with someone who's been brainwashed or if she was brainwashed, but I I can't imagine it's like you just sit down and have coffee with them and like you're fine. But I feel like there's got to be some middle ground between like suggesting some alternate reading and like kidnapping. You know? Yeah. There's got to be like a like a lesser. I don't know. I've never tried. I'll let you know. Okay. Just Please do. Are you yeah. gonna be a cult to programmer? Yeah, I'm gonna is go. That... I'm gonna go find some cults. I'm Are gonna you go intrigued? to a CrossFit gym and just start trying to sack people. Oh yeah. It's not a cult. It's. I'm sure it's very fun. But I did they're... CrossFit for years. Yeah. It's. It's kind of a like improv's kind of a cult. CrossFit's kind oh, of yeah. a cult. I like joining. Comedy's cults. kind of a cult. I don't oh, know. Yeah. I they're think all cults. I, my friend did, was a CrossFit instructor, and I. I really like. Actually, have a lot of great respect for it, and also I think people just like community. I think like we're in this weird modern era where someone's like, if you're really into a community, it's a cult. It's like, oh, yeah. I just like really want to be accountable to a group, and it feels nice to belong to something, and right. this is positive for me. So get off my back. But either way, in any of the things that I've done that people say are cults, nobody's forced me to change my name, giving me a low protein diet. That's and... quite the opposite in CrossFit, actually. I've heard. Yeah. yeah, high protein. That's high protein. true. That's true. Sure. Yeah, paleo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So if it's a paleo cult, gray area, again. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. High protein diet? Know. Well, I guess no crime. Mm-hmm. You know? And there's no, like, Joe CrossFit that's at the head of things that is making all the decisions for <laughs> everyone. No, his name is everyone. CrossFit. It's a two-name. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, there's, there's a, a, a fit family. accountability CrossFit, proper form CrossFit, mm-hmm. paleo CrossFit. Wad CrossFit. <laughs> CrossFit. Wall ball CrossFit. Wall ball CrossFit. Kettlebell CrossFit. Yeah, Snatch CrossFit. Snatch CrossFit is, uh, she's beautiful, but she's a pill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be stuck in a car with Snatch, Snatch CrossFit. CrossFit. No, that's, that was what I was referring to. I'm yeah. glad we finally got it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is my faded afternoon with Snatch CrossFit. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Ted Patrick was not happy also with how that news report came out because they kind of made fun of him. And he was I thinking that they, might be funny. they probably went in open minded and were like, oh, no, this guy's kind of crazy. Yeah. He's just playing Pokemon but with people. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. Uh, another member, Sure Israel. Uh, was taken. Sure, S U R E. S U R E. Okay, yeah, sure. Like raise sure. your hand if you're sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's sure. Uh, he. He is sure. He, They're yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. They're eternal. They don't have yeah. fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, Israel was taken to his parents to Israel, <laughs> which seems fitting. Uh, they were like, "Do you want to go?" And it's like, "Sure, Israel." They thought I asked what his name was. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, if you could go anywhere, and what's your name again? Sure, Israel. Oh, I guess we sent him to Israel and mm-hmm. asked him his name later then, right? I think that they felt that if, if, he, if they just got away from the cult for long enough, he would mm-hmm. kind of come back to himself. Sure. Uh, but he didn't. Oh, he, no. He fled. He stowed away on a ship to Greece, then hitchhiked to France, where he worked at a winery until he saved enough money to fly to New York and then made his way across the country back to Seattle. That's like Homeward Bound, but with a human. Yeah. It's amazing. And instead of animals, it's a cult. It's the cult. And yeah. 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 It's impressive. Uh, so yeah, he just felt the pull. If you ever want back. someone to never leave you, I guess just give them free LSD. I think we found the secret to eternal love. Okay. Just a Is free money bucket manip- and a bunch of LSD. Manipulate people with drugs? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's- it's not manipulating if you give it to them. It's manipulating oh, if, you, that- if you put it in their food and don't tell them. I think. That's, that's, I don't know if Ted Patrick would agree with you on that. Ted Patrick and I are going to talk this out. We have a lot of gray areas we need okay. to work out here. Okay, fair enough. Uh, 1983 was the 15th anniversary of the group. And uh, the group had about 200 adults and 150 children as members. Wow. Big group. Sirius had begun to develop some concerns about the way the group was being run. Money had become a concern, and the group was plummeting into debt. Sure. Love had purchased a fishing vessel called Abundance. Uh, The idea was family members could go fishing and sell their catch. Make money that way. The boat was in serious disrepair, and efforts to make it safe and seaworthy racked up $100,000 in debt and took up thousands of man hours. Yeah, dude. Boats are money pits. Yeah. they uh, knows it. Moored out in uh, Lake Union, and it was just people were living on it, and it was just a mess. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, The family had also become involved in several real estate ventures with love having sole financial power. Uh, He purchased a former brick factory in the Yakima Valley for $75,000. To make a to make a new brick factory, what's your plan there? He was just gonna. They were gonna do something with the bricks. I don't All know. Right, yeah. He was. They tried to talk him out of it. Yeah. And he said, "No, we're getting this old brick factory." We need, you guys, you don't understand. 
brick factory deals like this do not come around <laughs> exactly. every day. We have to move. I'm like, well, he sounds so sure. Mm-hmm. No, sure is gone. He sounds yeah. so like sure. Sure was a very confident member of the group. Like, so. like, like sure is in the group still. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, each household was now ordered to become self-sufficient rather than fully entwined financially with the larger community. Uh, so working outside the community didn't leave as much time for spiritual and communal endeavors and created a rift between members. Yeah, day jobs are in everything. Day jobs are, yeah. yeah not, a, a not a fan. Not a fan. Nope. Except for yeah. the sketch group day job. They're great. They're great. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. Great. See them at the pocket theater sometime. Yeah. Day jobs are a bummer. Yeah. Uh, those who made more money had better comforts and privileges than those who brought in less. Yeah, that is that is the bullshit of life. Yeah. This is yeah microcosm. Sorry, uh, microcosm yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, what's more, the size of the group and independence of houses meant that the community wasn't as tight-knit as it had been. People didn't know each other as well, and the family wasn't as close. All right, okay. But none of these were the biggest problem. Well, love was their biggest problem. Well, love like. had become addicted to cocaine. Oh, see, that's why you only use it sparingly. Yeah. Love, come on, see, man. See, here's the problem. If you use it sparingly, but then you have millions of dollars from people that are bringing in and joining yeah. and giving up everything. Yeah. And it's the early 80s. Yeah. So he's doing a lot of coke. Yeah. Uh, he snorted and smoked cocaine. <laughs> His and name s- went from love to shouting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's smoking it too, allegedly. So okay, that's well, a that's a that's an even bigger problem. This in and out. It's a yeah. two feet addiction is what that is. Yeah. Uh, to the point where he became isolated, paranoid, and withdrawn from the community he built. He stopped attending many of the group meetings. Logic, serious, and meekness ran things in Seattle, and strength ran things in Arlington. Good choice. Good choice to have strength on the farm. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, Love began treating those in his household like servants and spent money on... Began? Hold up. He began (laughs) treating the men like servants. (laughs) That's okay. Fair enough. Fair that's, enough. Yeah, just going to yeah. yell about... You didn't write it. It's all good. I uh, did write this, actually. Oh, well, so, see, yeah. that's what happens. This is the Great Depression. Only the Great Depression for white people. Drives me nuts, man. When it happens to white dudes, suddenly it's a problem. That's true. I'm not referring to Chris Allen. He's really nice and like generally very liberal, but I'm glaring at him as a representation of white men everywhere. No, so I, I should that's check. what's happening. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's true. He, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, he, but suddenly he, everyone's getting three quarters of food. <laughs> Uh, everyone in this household is basically just like everybody needs to wait on me rather than just being yeah, a part Coke of the group. Will do or, that to you. Yeah, Coke makes people. I'm you know yeah, I don't want I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but Coke makes people assholes. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, again, we don't want to be controversial here, but uh, cocaine might make you a little bit hard to deal with sometimes. Yeah. just sometimes. Who knows? Mm-hmm. We don't want to be. Saying things we can't take back. Right. Yeah. Don't don't make don't don't write a check you can't cash there. <laughs> the cocaine lobby is very litigious. <laughs> That's true. They are. Uh, he smoked twelve dollars cigars, went to the symphony, ate caviar, and allegedly used several hundred dollars worth of cocaine a day. Well, that's easy to do. Yeah. That's like, what, a what a, a dollop of cocaine? Yeah. Yeah. It's a right. it's a smattering. Like a smattering, a, a pinch, skosh. a hint. Not, mm-hmm. a, not a pinch, it's a hint. Mm-hmm. A but this dash. is also several hundred dollars in 1983. Okay. So it's, maybe it's a... a, a like a, like a, a baby's a, forearm worth of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they measure cocaine, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, no, that's, I didn't, I didn't I've never heard cubit. that measurement before. You know, like a so. biblical cubit? Oh, yeah. A yeah, cubit of cocaine. It's a, a, a parcel, a... Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Sure. The score, I think that may be years, but, you know, mm, years are eternal. 20, 20 years of cocaine. Of coke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the children didn't have shoes or school supplies. Oh. And Fresh Israel, a soft spoken teacher. Was that Will Smith? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will Smith briefly joined the call and was the Fresh Prince of Israel. Yeah. Uh, well, Fresh uh, humbly suggested to Love that the group's resources should be spent on children, and Love tore into her and screamed at her in front of everybody. Sure. Yeah. Uh, he was the literal conduit of Christ. How dare she question him? Well, that's a good question, actually. I mean, yeah. he's a literal conduit, after all. Yeah, yeah. The kids are like, we don't know what conduit means, because we don't have any damn school supplies. Mm-hmm. So then they stopped listening to him, because he didn't no, the teach con- him what a conduit was. Word conduit's not in the Bible. Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Not... I don't think that it is. Okay. Well, you, you would know. I would know. I've, I'm, no, I'm Catholic. I have no idea what's in the Bible. Got it. I know Got what it. someone tells me in the Bible. Okay. Yeah, conduit, never been mentioned. Never. So. No. No conduits. Why would they lie to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Love promised to stop using cocaine, but it was short lived. Yeah, which was what he was out of cocaine for two hours. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm not going to use it anymore. I found some. Just kidding. Yeah, exactly. This is the last line I'm going to do for the next 20 minutes. Oh man, there's last lines, and then there's last lines. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> He's very wistful looking, and you guys can't see Chris's mm. face right now. But yeah, spent yeah. a month there one night. <laughs> uh, logic and strength 
uh, brought concerned members together in small meetings, and they drafted a letter to Love expressing their concerns. Sure. It read in part, quote, We believe that you have alienated yourself from the general family to such a degree that the very existence of the family is in jeopardy. Okay. And it was signed right. by 29 members. All right. When presented with the letter, Love screamed that they were in league with Satan and tore up the letter before finishing reading it. we got to read the whole letter, man. Yeah, Could have said psych at the end. That's true. It might have know? been a practical joke. Yeah. Like a butt bottle switch. Yeah, like a classic butt bottle <laughs> switch, but with letters. No, love, love! It's just a butt it's bottle just, switch! Yeah, it's yeah. April 1st. It's mm. eternal April Fool's Day. Yeah. It's, it's, they don't everything's, believe it's eternal. Eternal. everything's eternal. Eternal yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, logic and Strength were the first to leave the group. Over the next several that months, all but about 30 left. And they were weak, easily impressionable Israel, weak Israel, can't read Israel. Yeah. And uh, stand by your man, Israel. Yeah. That was sort of the one that remained. <laughs> Don't tread on me, Israel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, some rejoined with their old families. Some formed other communes with those they met, had met in the Israel family. Richness Israel, who had given millions to the group, filed a lawsuit. Oh, now we recognize the law, Rich. I get it. <laughs> You're eternal, but you're going to sue. He was recognizing the law, just a different law. The law, The law of love. The law of whatever weird rainbow-colored license they had. Yeah. Uh, he would later say that he, he didn't need the money, but he was concerned that with so many assets, love would have the power to bring more into his fold. So yeah. s- several members who had given large contributions joined the suit, trusting that richness would distribute the money fairly. Well, that's a nice idea so far. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the suit alleged that Love used the money for his personal lifestyle and business ventures. Right. Uh, the two sides met to work out a deal. Love and his advisor had taken LSD the night before the negotiation. Uh, number one tactic to su- successful ne- negotiation mm-hmm. is uh, negotiate with the things you hallucinate. Yeah. It's how you practice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to take LSD the night before you have something important to do. Well, I don't think you're... Well, not if sleeping's important to you, but mm-hmm. like, you know, who cares, right? That's, Listen, gonna, that's true. If you're going to be eternal, you might as well do LSD whenever you want. That's true. Yeah. That is true, yeah. Uh, the suit came accompanied with a barrage of allegations that he had given drugs to children and used his position to rape women, both of which he denied. Well, you know, no one usually, like, says, yeah, no, I did that. Yeah. That sounds like me. Oh, that sounds like me. My bad. That's true. He is addicted to cocaine, and he is known for sexually exploiting women in his cult. Right. So, yeah. it's not... Outside like, the realm of possibility. It, it would make some sense. Again, we don't want to be controversial, but cult leaders might not be great with women. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the settlement was reached. Richness, now going by his old name, Daniel Gruner, was to get $1.3 million in the Seattle properties. Nice. Uh, Love could keep the Arlington Ranch. Gruner allocated the properties to his for- to the former family members to start a new life. Nice. That's nice. Yeah. The remaining members of the family moved to the ranch. Love went to California and stayed with friends, got a job, and lived with one of his wives and children for about a year before returning to Washington. Right. Because he had better coke hookups here. Yeah. Uh, serious Israel-, Israel had been running the ranch in his absence. All right. Uh, on the ranch, the family regrouped. They mostly lived out of tents and yurts at first, growing crops, and sold them in Arlington and... It- uh, excuse me, uh, in Arlington at Pike Place Market in Seattle. Nice. The family opened up several restaurants in Arlington, most notably the Bistro, a fine dining establishment. Uh, in 1990, they started an annual garlic festival, which became renowned in the area. Really? You know, I know the garlic festival. Yeah. I'm from Everett. We go to the different random food festivals. There's strawberries in Marysville. Uh, there was a sausage fest. I am not kidding you, was the name of the festival at my grade school. Okay. And then the garlic festival. Yeah. I know the garlic festival. This is, that's these guys. Amazing. This is the garlic festival. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 19, oh yeah, the, uh, by 2003, the ranch was struggling financially and in the down economy, the family filed for bankruptcy and lost the Arlington property. They sold it to the Union for, of Reform Judaism, which built a recreational camp on the land. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Love and his inner circle went to Bothell and remained there for the rest of his days. He died February 1st, 2016th of prostate cancer at age 75. Really? Yeah. Dang. So just earlier this year. I feel like if you do cocaine and LSD that much, you're supposed to die of that. Or maybe all the drug education I have was a lie, right? Uh, actually, LSD is really good for you. See? Yeah. And See? cocaine is, it makes you awake to yeah. life. It's really, you really fit. Your heart's beating real fast. Yeah, like, it's exactly. Like, it's like cardio. It's like nasal cardio. You can run five miles or you can do a light in cocaine. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you'll have 19 better ideas if you're on cocaine, obviously. Mm-hmm. Everybody's ideas on cocaine are much better, Always better than their ideas normally. The show Growing Pains was incredible. Yeah, some people, I mean, some people 
Coke will just tear through you, and you'll be yeah. dead in a couple of years. And some people, it'll you'll live to it's be like, seventy-five. You know, go on a jog in the morning, have a bump, take your kid to school. The usual. Yeah, the usual. The usual, like it's like you can have juices or Cliff Bars or a little Coke bump. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. where they sell it at those GNC stores. Oh, is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's Good what vitamin C actually is. Really? Yeah, they can't call it cocaine because it's illegal. Oh, so but vitamin, vitamin C. C. Yeah, yeah, you just oh. crush it up. Yeah. No yeah. wonder I drink 10 cartons of orange juice yeah, a day. Yeah, Sunny D is that, the best. Oh, man. Yeah, painted my house, lost my job. It yeah. Was great. It was great. Mm. Found my job. Yeah. But this cult operated for, for years That's in Upper so Queen crazy. Anne. I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you, do you, where do you think they, do you have any idea where the houses were? Is they were like all any, up, all over the uh, do you know the area in Upper Queen Anne at all? A little, yeah. Do you know where the cemetery is? Yeah. It was right by there. That's so crazy. It's right by the cemetery up there. I know some people living in like a really cool like group house in uh in Queen Anne. I wonder if they're like harkening back to the roots. Oh, I don't know. See? Oh, I think it was uh Sixth and McGraw, I think Sixth is where it is, which is up over there's a like a true value hardware store up sure. there and yeah, they had, they had a whole bunch of houses in this really small little clump See, area. See, that part I think sounds really nice, but it just took such a dark dark turn. Yeah. You gotta, you, r- cocaine ruins things. Cocaine just ruins everything good that we love. Because if it's all just sitting around drinking coffee and wine and smoking weed and yeah. talking about the life. The worst thing you're gonna do is just yell at somebody, maybe. Because mm-hmm. of a political discussion. Right. Yeah, you're not gonna like subjugate people and. And force yeah. them to become sexually subservient to you and right. give them low protein diets and. Right. Not let them sleep and. Yeah. That, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the kids were like, actually trying to mess with the poop cups or if they were just on LSD and trying to help oh but, like, yeah figured out you know I found a more efficient way to arrange yeah, these, these poop are cups to here me. well apparently some of the kids also had uh had developed secret names amongst themselves that's that cute in, ho- in their in their own little when they talked to each other they would call each other like Mary and John and Thomas oh, and things that's like they're that they're rebelling and they like would yeah. secretly cut each other's hair and like yeah. shower and stuff and when the cult broke up they all wanted normal names yeah. they had a really hard time adjusting to normal life yeah i could imagine after that i there were some homeschool kids at my high school and i was like you're having a hard time just from that transition i can't imagine cult homeschooling to a public high school yeah that'd be that'd be rough we should write that sitcom though cult cult home show cult <laughs> high school cult, but oh man i <laughs> me no talk good no that's right you're just too excited about the idea yeah no it's a great idea also, if we're gonna write cult something what when has talking ever helped anybody write anything never, never. that's when ever that we is, don't need that, that is exactly when and we'll mm. just do the thing that they did and just use whatever words we want and be like, no, no, they mean something else. That's You're mistaken. True. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the real victim here is the English language. <laughs> the English language, language is really who suffered yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. That's not true. There were lots of people who suffered. That's sad. I wish, I, it's like, you want cults to work out sometimes, you know? Yeah. I just want people to like live in a room where they have like a money bucket and can just hang out. Well, there are, there's communes and there's co-housing and things like that yeah. that are not, they're not cults but their people live communally and right. they live within a part a larger community and they work really well they work super and, well yeah they work uh they work great i know people that are involved in yeah. in, in homes like that and yeah. communal living and yeah, yeah it's when one person says i'm the direct conduit that's of god usually the red flag is yeah it? that's a that's a tricky one and that's that's the other thing that separates kind of cults from religion is right. that cults rise and fall with one person it's one person yeah and when right. that one person dies or is gone or whatever or everything else has a debilitated cocaine habit that's that's a factor yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's a concern always a concern a baby concern mm-hmm. maybe that's why the everyone likes the new pope because he's like not addicted to cocaine or something that's not what i heard really well i don't know i, oh, yeah. I would love that so much you would love if the pope was addicted to cocaine yes that would be perfect for me i think that would be the best for thing you? ever I think it'd be great. First of all, I just like the idea I'm going to write a tight like, five minutes on the Coke Pope. <laughs> Pope Pocaine? Pope Cane? Mm-hmm. No, it's not there. I just have visions of this, <laughs> all the like, pieces are there. really excited old man running around. The Vatican's a giant museum, just doing, like, the risky business sock slide through all these, like, amazing old Greek statues. Oh, yeah. He's just, just coked out. Just out of his mind. Yeah, just going nuts. Like, taking the Swiss guard's pants and wearing them. It'd be, it'd be a, a fun romp for the whole family. Yeah. That'll be the Pope. movie spinoff yeah. of, uh, of Cult Homeschool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be the Frasier of the Cheers that is Cult Homeschool. Yeah, and then one actor will be like, why have I been playing this character for yeah, 30 years? Yeah, one actor will be canonized as, or not canonized, but made the Pope out of the high school, mm-hmm. and then he will be Coke Pope. Yeah. There we go. We there solved you go. it. Yeah. We totally did it. Done and done. Written and written. Uh, my web series is better than that idea that I just had, for the record. It is, I yeah. I feel like I've been spitballing a lot of terrible entertainment ideas. Mm-hmm. 
Or great ones. We'll find out. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening to the Seattle Files. Thank you so much, Maddie, for being thank here. Thank you for having me and teaching me about this cult. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, wonderful. Good. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday with a new topic and a new guest. Uh, like us on Facebook. Subscribe and rate in iTunes. Uh, thanks again to Keith Dahlgren for this topic suggestion. If you have a topic you would like to see here, it's uh, an episode about, shoot me an email at the Seattle Files at gmail.com. Also, go check out Northern Bells. Go yeah. on Vimeo, type in Northern Bells. Uh, check it out. It's great. You'll love it. Uh, thank you for listening. Be back next Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Bye.